welcome back guys to part 12 of our Construct 3 top-down series and today we're going to be focusing on the music uh, component as well as our player attack if you want to call it that we've got the animation in our last video but we haven't done the actual collision on the enemy now we did do the enemy as you saw the enemy attack uh, and animation in our last video i've gone ahead now just off screen you guys remember in our previous one we did the knockback uh, player functionality when a player gets hurt he knocks himself back he flashes etc i've gone and duplicated this you just can watch that video and do the same for your enemy it's no point in in doing a separate video on that uh, as you can see i've just gone and done the same for enemy gets hurt and I've gone and basically copied what I've done over here uh, for the enemy and assigned it to the enemy family. Now I will put the project in the subscription to download in case you, you don't quite understand or you've missed it, but it really is the same thing. I've got enemy hurt, um, as you can see over here, enemy hurt, I pass the UID, I use every instance of the, uh, of the enemy uh, to say if hurt, obviously run that instance based on the UID that's passed. And then I begin the process of the knockback effect. And you can see the same stuff, you know, make him move if he gets knocked back. Uh, and essentially that is what we have here as well on our player, setting him to true when he is hurt when the knockback is over, setting him to false and re-enabling the player identical as well over here. The only difference that I did here was I did the death as well. So if I close the player hurt, I've created the player flash, which is, as you can see, simple flashing on the enemies as a, as a family. It runs that function. Yeah, you can see when the health is lower, uh, greater than zero, do the enemy recovery. When it is in fact um, less than zero or equal to zero, do the enemy death. And the death here, yeah, you can see as well, it's just simple. Just basically created a function, passed the enemy UID, knowing that that's the specific enemy, and then saying on the family, destroy the enemy. So it's really simple. There's nothing complicated on it. I've done exactly what I've done on the player. Just go and copy that. And I've obviously made use of the player function the same way we pass it through here, but because this is a single instance and not a multiple instance because there's more than one enemy, we just use pick instance with enemy, which is this enemy basis pick instance, and we've done that in one of the tutorials as well. So I'm not going to run through that. That's the only difference in this stage, you could say, opposed to my last video, but uh, it, you've done and seen that code already, so you guys are quite familiar with that. Right, so the first thing we're going to do now is obviously we've got this player. If I run this now, You'll see I've got my enemy, he's going to come towards me, and the sword unfortunately does nothing. As you know, we've done the attack animation in our last video, but this doesn't do anything. So that's what we're going to work on today with some music. So let's start with the music first, because that's a lot easier. I've gone ahead and put in a downloaded, a free stage sound, you could say. I hope this plays. There we go. So I've downloaded that. I'll link it in the description as well. And we're going to add that to our stage. So how we can do that is basically over onto our main, let's call it our main event sheet. We're going to go and add the audio component because that's the first thing we need to start with. So again, here we've got our system stuff, our dictionary, keyboard, etc. Let's go ahead and right click and add new and let's click audio. Right, so now that we've got the audio here, this allows to bring in the music. Now, as I said, I've already put in a stage that I've downloaded free sounds. I'll link it in the description below. You can go and download all sorts of swords, etc. I'm going to show you what it looks like to give it a bit more depth in terms of sounds and bring this game to life. Let's go ahead and add a new event because we, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to say system audio. And we're going to invert is tag playing. And let's give this tag, let's say it's stage one. We'll need to move this to its respectable event sheet, but I'm using the main for now because each each stage will have its own event sheet, essentially, for those specific things. So let's call it stage one, and let's invert that. So if it's not playing, go ahead and play as you as you can imagine. Now it's called stage one here as well. So add action. Let's go audio again, system audio, and let us go play by name because we know the name. We're going to click on from our where is it in our sounds? So in our sounds, and we're going to go. We can move that to the music, obviously. Let's call it stage one, case sensitive, based on the name of the file. Uh, we can say is in fact looping set it to 10 which is max volume for us and go ahead and say and give it a tag and yeah we called it stage one so let's go ahead and call it stage one as well okay stage one bg would have been better background or something done let's go ahead and just change that to background so you know that that is the background music done so if i go ahead and play the stage now we should have some music and there we go we've got some music which is pretty awesome Right, so now it just adds a bit more depth. And then obviously when I swing the sword, I'm gonna add like a sword and a motion, you could say sound, as well as the different attack sounds. So it's a bit of work in terms of finding the right sounds, downloading them and using them and making sure we use uh, royalty-free sounds, uh, or for those that are really creative, can go ahead and create their own sounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop that. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is focus on our player attack. That's, that's the purpose of really today's video. 
So let's go ahead and create a, let's double click on the player. There's two ways you can do this. We can do this via the animation, or alternatively we can do this with a spawn of a, another animation above this player so that when he's changed over to that specific player, uh, animation then we can say look on collision with this animation you know do damage but i'm going to spawn the the bullet the hit that we had this called hit i'm just a uh, bullet i've gone ahead and just called this hit for now so we know that that is the marker so over onto the player if you double click him you've got these origin points as i explained to you guys before in the previous video so let's go ahead and click on the melee attack down and you'll see the furthest point of this if i zoom this out is in fact by the sword. So we want to know that when we get to, when the player, the enemy is touched in this area, go ahead and do damage. So yeah, I'm going to go and create a new hit point. You can say a new origin point. I'm going to call that hit for now. If that makes sense, let's call it a capital hit. Okay, fantastic. Then I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'm going to go ahead and put it right over here and just click on it. So you'll see here's the red dot. This being the furthest point. Okay. I'm only going to do that on scene one because I've got to scene two. You'll see it disappear. You will probably have it, but. Over on scene two, sorry, it must just be deleted. You'll see that over onto scene two, you'll see it's not here. Now I'm going to leave it just here on scene one for now, this hit point, because that is essentially frame one and the furthest point. So I'm going to do the same for the others quickly. I'm going to click on the furthest point. I'm going to go and add a new hit point, and let's rename that to hit as well. And let's check it over there, and let's do the same for left as well. The new hit point rename. Now you can do this by essentially just adding it to all animations, but I just want to be sure that it is the right way. Add a new image and call it hit as well. Right, fantastic. So now I know that this is basically the furthest point, and I'm going to spawn something on that essentially. So what I want to do now is when the enemy animation is playing, we've got the attack is finished. But I want to add a new one, which is going to be on animation finished of poor playing, sorry. Go ahead and then spawn a new object. So let's go is playing. And we're going to call that, if I'm not mistaken, it's melee. Uh, melee, we're probably going to have to, to add the, um, the direction as well to it. Melee attack. In fact, let me just do this. Go ahead and copy this. Makes it a bit faster. So if this is playing, then go and do something. So I'm going to move that up because finish is obviously should come afterwards. Now I'm going to go ahead and spawn something. So when it is playing on player enemy, spawn, let's type in spawn, spawn another object. And that object's going to be hit, obviously. No one's going to see it on layer zero, but at image point one. Okay, that was the image point we selected when we went and created it now on the animation. So on there, spawn that and then I can create the collision. Then I need to destroy that because that's gonna spawn on there, but I wanna do this as well, add another condition, add another condition and say player and then compare a frame, compare frame needs to be equal to one. Okay, only on, on, on equal to one do you go ahead and create this. Then at the end here, we need to create a collision. So we're saying if hit is on collision with another object, and that object being enemies, right? Then go ahead and run the enemy, basically function that's called hurt enemy and pass that parameter. So let's go back here and say functions, run the enemy hurt. And I wanna pass the enemy bases dot UID. Okay, that is the one to set that that specific enemy is in question, right? Okay, so there we go. So we're creating a hit pointer when the first frame is played. We're destroying, oh, we need to destroy it when it's completed. So let's go ahead and just do that as well. Say hit destroy, because when it's finished, I want to destroy it. Right guys, so the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the fact that it's the tip of the sword, it's easy to spawn. I know that if I collide the hit with the enemy, that way I guarantee it's a great hit opposed to him really overlapping me. You can do this on animation, is playing, etc. There's different ways that you can achieve this goal. I'm going to run through multiple ways, maybe in an upcoming video. But for now, I'm using the hit point. It's pretty accurate and it works pretty well as long as you destroy it so that you're not excessively using memory by spawning them and not destroying them. So this is vital here to ensure that you destroy it. Because otherwise, every time you swing the sword, you're gonna create a new object. And it starts becoming dangerous and quite resource heavy. Okay, so if I go ahead now and just run this in the debug, I'm gonna add one more in fact over here, add another condition, just called my eye. I'm gonna say that this should be um, 
on frame is changed. So on frame change, on animation frame equal one, and the attack is playing, the animation go ahead and spawn. So if I run this in the debug, I should see the hit is zero. Yeah, you can see zero. If I swing the sword, there it goes to one, and then the animation finishes at zero. So if I hit him now, if I get close, there's one, and if I hit him again, he should die, and there he dies. Okay, so that's based on his um, his functions. Hit once, he's got a, you know, he had basically his health was set to two, so I had to hit him twice, as you guys know. Now, that's the logistics of it, guys. As you can see, it works pretty well. I've still got to do some work on the animation. That's obviously definitely not smooth, the, you could say, the, the enemy animation. So we'll do that in a separate video to show you what that would look like to ensure that the animation is, in fact, more smoother opposed to it looking a little bit erratic like that. Okay. All right, guys, so that's our video for today to show you how you create the sort of hit points on the animation and obviously adding in the music, which gives it a nice a little bit of an in-depth tone and slowly bringing this to life. We're going to add sound. So when the, you could say, when the hit point is created on frame one like this, as this, on the start of this animation is playing, we can go ahead and create, as you guessed it, the sounds for the sword swinging. Um, when we on collision with enemy, we're going to add a sound here for argument's sake. Uh, as you guys can see it when he gets hurt to make sure that there's a hurt sound and slowly you bring the depth in which really makes the game exciting uh, as well right guys so i hope you enjoyed it um, our next video is probably going to be transitions with regards to the um, different rooms i want to show you guys going downstairs what that will look like and then i think we're pretty much almost there the rest is really just you know tailoring the little bits ensuring that the, the enemy angle is correct at the player on attack making sure that there are certain things we've done a broad spectrum of it as a whole but there is definitely serious room for for different improvements i want to maybe do a separate video on this enemy as well but all these different types of things making sure the idols are right making sure that attack is right you know getting it all centimeters next to each other maybe adding some drop shadows for the enemy but you guys guessed it and then we're going to go over to huts which is basically the menu overlays the health bars and then also the different objects and items uh, that we can also m maybe do in another video but as always guys if you're new here if you can hit the subscribe that'll be awesome uh, hit a little thumbs up there would be great as well and we'll catch you guys in the next one